What's up, YouTube? Welcome to ExceedTheHype.com. It's your boy, Lucrecio, coming at you with another video, all right? Today's video is entitled, The Cleveland Dilemma. And what am I talking about here? It's the dilemma that the Cavaliers are in. On one hand, they just did a trade or whatever. They traded Kyrie Irving for uh, Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, another center, and... Brooklyn's pick in next year's draft, which Brooklyn is going to be bad again. So there's a high likelihood that that pick is going to be, you know, a top pick, maybe top five, maybe top one, right? And the idea that that pick could draw somebody like Bagley, who I've heard a great deal about, or, you know, Michael Porter, or one of the really, really good high school players who will play one year in college and then come to the NBA in all likelihood. And you have the opportunity if you're LeBron James and if you want to stay in Cleveland to draft a guy like that and have him be like your Kawhi Leonard, how Kawhi Leonard was to Tim Duncan, an up and coming player, even though the Spurs did not, he was not a, a lottery pick. The Spurs just had a good eye for scouting. Um, this guy would be like that for LeBron James. He'll be a guy who can take over the bulk of the work as LeBron James could, could decline slowly and could continue to win championships on well on into the future or and in addition to that they will have the, the opportunity to re-sign Isaiah Thomas as well and then Kevin Love is still under contract so they'd be able to keep a contending team together while drafting a really possibly great you know franchise type player to add to to that core or if you think LeBron James is going to leave your team, you could take the approach and go all in to see if you can win one more title and go four for four uh, as far as final, finals appearances in the, in the Eastern Conference. So what am I talking about going all in? Well, if you were to take that pick, add to it you know, some salary or whatever the case may be, there's a good chance that you can get a star, superstar type player out of it. Right. But the catch is to that you won't get a player like that that's under contract for three years or for two years. The only player you can get like that for that draft pick in this situation, because teams, if, if you already have an established star, why would you trade that established star to draft somebody who may or may not be a star? That doesn't make any sense. Right. The only way it makes sense is if that team is worried that that established star is going to bolt after this season that's when they would trade him and how many people were in that situation well Paul George was in that situation Cleveland could have had Paul George but that Kyrie with the Kyrie trade or whatever but you know LeBron wouldn't commit and they weren't comfortable doing that that turned out to bite them in a the butt Paul George is in OKC well who else is out there somebody else who's out there is DeMarcus Cousins he's another guy out there that's you know, on an expiring contract or whatever, is a star to superstar type player, can help push your team over the edge. But once again, the catch is he can leave. He can sign for that one season, or if he comes at the all-star break, he can be there for whatever the 40 games or whatever that's left in the season in the playoffs. And as soon as you lose, then he can go find whatever team he wants to. And it's unlikely they, that they would sign some type of extension because why would you? Like, free agency is such an important thing in basketball. The idea that you can choose to play for whatever team you want to play, live in whatever city you want to play, you want to live in, why would you give that up just to, to be under contract for a team that you may not even want to be with, right? So, that's the dilemma you're dealing with. Are you going to build for the future? Or are you going to build, are you going to put all your chips to the middle of the table right now and go for DeMarcus Cousins? Well... <laughs> Cleveland is currently in that dilemma and personally I think it's going to be the latter and I think it's a very risky thing to do because if you think about it Isaiah Thomas is somebody who wants money right he 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 gets paid a little bit less than seven million dollars a year he scored 28 points 28 almost 29 points per game last year and he's been underrated he's only now starting to get kind of the credit that was due to him because I always thought Isaiah Thomas had some game or whatever he's only now starting to get the credit and now you know they're starting to, to seep in there with the hey you know that hip injury is going to end your career type conversation so he's somebody if you're Cleveland and you just show him the money 
he I think he has a high likelihood that he will resign with Cleveland. And the pairing with him and Kevin Love, even without LeBron, would still be a playoff team, a top four seed in the in the Eastern Conference. So you do have that opportunity. And then if you do that, then you can still get an elite wing in this draft if you get like, you know, the number one pick or whatever and you and you want the Bagley young man or whatever the case may be, you can still um get that type of, you know, franchise player, wing player or whatever on your team in the bag and still continue to be a team that sells the playoff tickets, that wins a lot of games during the regular season, that still sells out every home game or whatever. You can still have that. Or you can go on the other side and you can say, okay, we're not going to be, we may not be competitive because LeBron leaves, we get DeMarcus Cousins, we trade that pick for him and he leaves. Then it's a little bit shaky with the leadership of the franchise Isaiah Thomas may not be that interested in saying and then he leaves and then you know you never know Kevin Love may just say hey I, I want to get out of here I'll demand a trade if you don't trade me I'm going to leave I'm definitely not going to resign at that point he would be one year left in this deal so then you would end up losing him too you could end up losing absolutely everything and having a star from the star from uh the base level and rebuild it with a with a like 28th or a 27th draft pick would be all that you retain from the situation and salaries. So it's definitely a tough situation for the Cleveland Cavaliers to have to deal with. Um, even though I'm sure a lot of people would want those types of problems, but it is nonetheless a tough situation, a tough choice. Do you go all in, you push all your chips to the middle of the table and say, we want to try to get two championships in four years since we have LeBron or do you take the more conservative approach and be like, hey, if we don't make this drastic move, LeBron may leave us and the championship window closes officially, but we can still be competitive. We can still sell the tickets, sell out home games. We can still get a couple playoff games per year. We just, we're just we just not going to make it to the finals, but we can still be a legit team in the Eastern Conference with a core of Isaiah Thomas, Kevin Love, and a rookie. And then who knows, depending on how good the rookie is, maybe he could elevate us to title level later. Which one would you do? Would you go for the star now, the, the max salary now, the one-year deal, the chance to win one more championship? Or do you push that aside, give yourself less of an opportunity to win a championship, but more of an opportunity to be a relevant team for the foreseeable future? The Cleveland Dilemma. All right, let me know what you think down below. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. All right, see you next time.